Hi, my name is Jared Moshe. I'm the writer director of Aporia, and here's a scene from the movie. That blur is the prettiest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> You're selling your Saturn rocket? Well, your dad gave you that. I don't want it anymore. Sometimes I get so mad, I just want to strangle the man that did this to us. The idea for the screenplay kind of came about when I was uh, becoming a dad for the first time. And suddenly the world became a lot scarier. Everything felt a lot more uncertain. And I was trying to figure out how to wrestle with that. And as an artist, the best way to do that is sometimes through my art. So I wanted to do a movie that like explored sort of someone grappling with uncertainty and trying to find a way to like control the world to a way that they understand it and bring it back to that place. Believe it or not, this was supposed to be a time machine. And now it's a gun that can fire a bullet into the past. So I wanted to try to keep it as simple as possible when I was putting up this world. And for this story, I thought about how to do it in a way that felt somewhat scientifically plausible and didn't give any easy answers. So the rules I sort of set forth with the machine, I sort of thought of it was a particle accelerator, you create a particle and it can send it back in time. And if somehow you get it in someone's head, and it can cause us basically an aneurysm or a stroke. All we need is a target. You know that's impossible, right? You forgot the soda again, didn't you? So when Mal returns, things are still more complicated than she thought because as much as she thought she wanted this life back together, they spent the last year essentially apart, eight months, because he was killed eight months ago. She remembers the eight months where he's dead. He's living in the eight months where he's alive. Riley's living in the eight months where he's been alive. So suddenly, Sophie finds herself like this outsider in her own family. And she's struggling to understand what's going on, what is all she missed, you know, what does that mean about her connection with Mal? And meanwhile, Mal notices how strange Sophie is acting. So it creates this disconnect that she wasn't expecting, and they both sort of have to grapple and figure out how to make it work. We have this power, why shouldn't we use it? It's too risky. Hey, Riley. We did something that no one has ever done before. But there is no undo button. Second floor, room 216.